This episode is sponsored by Honey Badger. In addition to Honey Badger's great error monitoring service, they also have an uptime monitoring for web developers. And Honey Badger has recently shipped an update that allows for public status pages that can help communicate outages to your customers. In addition to your uptime monitoring, Honey Badger now monitors your SSL certificates. And Honey Badger now has actions which will allow you to do bulk updates to all your errors, or you can set defaults for incoming errors. In this episode, we're going to have an interesting look at image uploads. And specifically, we're going to be uploading PDFs. So in this example, we have the Programming Ruby 3.2 book, and this is a book that I purchased, and it is in the form of a PDF. However, when I upload it to active storage, I'm unable to interact with it, even though I was able to generate a variant or a representation. However, sometimes we are in a situation where we want to be able to find or look through more than just the first page. So I'm going to refresh my screen here because I've made a code change on the background. And now we have a representation of the book again. But now we're able to then go through the different pages of that book. So we can hit the next page, previous page, or we can type in and then seek to a different page. And so this is pretty cool. And it has a lot of different kind of use cases. Maybe you want to keep an online library of all the different kind of manuals that you have that you can then just scroll through these and then read them as you need. And we combine with the episode that I did in 405 with the optical character recognition, you're also going to then be able to make them searchable. So in this episode, we're going to focus on being able to upload a PDF. So I've selected a new PDF. I'll give it a title. And once we create the book, it'll take us to the book show page. We'll see the title. And then we see the book that we can then interact with. And the nice approach to this is that we're going to use a stimulus controller to handle interacting with this PDF. And all of the file uploads will be handled through active storage. To start off this application, I have a very basic Rail 7 app and I've generated a scaffold called Books. The book model has one attached PDF and within the view, we're able to upload a file to that PDF. And I'm going to generate a stimulus controller and I'm just going to call it the PDF reader. And this is where all the business logic for the PDF will go. We're also going to bring in a library. So because I'm using ES build, I can do a yarn add PDFJS dist. And this is a library that we'll use to basically have an HTML canvas that we are then displaying each page of the PDF. And on your computer, you may have some trouble installing the PDF dist, which initially I did as well. So I did have to do first an npm install dash global and then the node dash gyp. And this is due to a dependency that the PDF library had where it did need to compile and it was missing this library. However, once that's done, we can go into the book partial and within the book partial, we'll create a div. And this is going to be where we have our stimulus controller. So we'll have the data controller. We'll set that equal to the PDF dash reader. And then we need to get the URL value of our book. So we can pass this in as a data dash PDF dash reader dash URL. And then we'll set a value. We'll set the value is equal to. And I'll just interplate this in, but you can use a content tag just as well. And we'll set the URL for, and then the book.pdf. We'll then just have some styling and I'll paste this in. But essentially what's going on here is that because I am using Bootstrap, I'm going to have a row and we're just going to justify the contents to the center. And then within that row, we're going to have a column. And this is where we're going to put the canvas. And then down below, we have another row. And within these rows, this is where we're going to have our buttons. And the buttons will be for something like the previous page. And then we'll also have a button for the next page. 
and we'll have an input with a type of number, and that'll be to keep track of what our current page is. So because our canvas is going to be displaying the PDF, we do need to make this a target. So we can have a data dash PDF dash reader dash target, and we'll set that equal to our canvas. And maybe we want to add a class on this canvas. We can do a width of 100, which just does a width of 100% with Bootstrap. Or you can do it 50 if you do know that you're targeting smaller screens and you want the whole PDF to be visible. And the buttons are going to be a little bit different because we need some kind of action on here whenever we are clicking on it. We can make this action whenever it is clicked, which it's a button, so we don't have to specify that event. But if we wanted to, we could. So we can have a click event that will take us to the PDF reader, and then we'll call the previous page function. We could add something similar for the next page, but instead of previous page, it'll go to the next page function. And the input's going to be a little bit different. So let's go ahead and set a minimum value of 1. So that way, someone can go to page zero or something like that. And then we need this to be a target because whenever we click the next page, we want to target this input and then increment it by one or click previous page. We would then subtract one from the input. So we can make a data dash PDF dash reader dash target. And we'll just call this the page number. But then we also need something else that if you were to type in a number to jump to a page, then we want to change the canvas to reflect that page. So we need a data dash action, and we'll set that equal to a change event to our PDF dash reader, and we'll just call the change page. And so that's all we have to do to get this functionality working on the view side. And before I leave this page, I am going to add in a few classes just to make this look a bit nicer. So on the buttons, we'll make it a button button primary, the text we don't want it to wrap, and then we'll add some margins. And on our input box, we'll do something a little similar, or we'll have our form control and then some margins. And that's all we really need to do. I'll go ahead and format this so it looks a little bit nicer, so it's easier to read. But now at this point, we're pretty much done with our view and we can go under the JavaScript controllers and we can edit the PDF reader controller to set up the stimulus controller. And so before I import in the libraries, let's go and set up the things that we do know. We know we have our static targets and we also have these static values. The static values, we have a URL, which is a string. And our static targets, we have our canvas. And then we also have our page number. Let's assume that we're always going to start on the current page. So we'll set a current page is equal to one. And when we set our variable like this, we can actually access it with something like this dot current page. And so I'm also going to set a PDF is equal to null because we do need to make sure that the PDF is loaded. And so I did find some weird things with this library, but I was able to get around them and it does seem to be very stable. So let's go ahead and import these in. We need to import in a couple of different functions. We need the get document, and then we also need the global worker options. And this is going to be imported in from the library pdfjs-dist forward slash build forward slash PDF. We also need to import in the pdfjs worker, and that's going to be from the PDF JS dash dist forward slash build forward slash PDF dot worker dot entry. And so when this stimulus controller initializes, we do need to set the global worker options and we need to set the worker source is equal to that PDF JS worker. And if we don't do this, I found that it basically just doesn't initialize and we get a console error and we're not able to interact with the PDF at all. We can then load our PDF. So I'll just create another function called load PDF, and I want this to all happen asynchronously. So we'll have an async load PDF. We'll set a constant, 
And let's just call this our loading task because we need to get the document and we need to get it passing in this dot URL value. And that's going to be the data attribute that we set up for the stimulus controller. We can then set this dot PDF, which again is in reference to this variable that we could access with this dot PDF. And then we want to await the loading task dot promise. So if you're working with smaller PDFs, then you probably won't ever notice an issue. But if you work with larger PDFs, then you want to make sure that it's loading first before it's executing onto the other items. We can go ahead and set the page number target, which that page number target is our input box. We can set the value is equal to this dot current page, which again is the variable that we set up at the top. And then we can call this dot render page, which is another function that we'll have to create. And then we can pass in the page number. So that's going to be our current page. So we'll need to set up this function and we'll again make it an async render page. We do need to take in our page number and then we can set a constant. And this is going to be for the actual page. So we can do an await just so this is happening asynchronously. We'll then have this dot PDF. We want to get the page of that page num. With that, we can set a constant for the viewport. We'll set that equal to the page dot get viewport. And then you can pass in some options. Notice one of the options is scale. So with that scale, we can give it something like 1.75, and then that's going to be zoomed in a bit. And if you also wanted to have some kind of zoom in, zoom out functionality for the PDFs, then you can make this scale a number that you set up here, like a current zoom with a default of 1.75. And then whenever you click one of the buttons, you would have a action to zoom in or to zoom out by changing that scale value and then re-rendering the PDF. So now I'm going to get the canvas. And with this, it's just going to be our canvas target. We can set the canvas width, and we can also set the canvas height. We'll set the width is equal to the viewport width, and we'll set the height of the canvas is equal to the height of the viewport. And if you've done anything with canvases, they are a little bit strange, so we do need to set a context. And this context is going to be the canvas dot get context. And because we are just working with 2D objects, we can have 2D that we pass in. And then we can get a constant of our render context. And this is really just a list of options where we have our canvas and we set that equal to our context that we just got. And then we can also get our viewport and set that equal to our viewport. Finally, we have another await for the page.render. And we want to render that render context. And so this should be enough to get our PDF loaded, but we're still not able to interact with it because we need the previous page, change page, and next page functions for the buttons and inputs. And those really aren't too bad. So we have a previous page. We can check if this.current page is greater than one, because if it is equal to one, then we don't want that button to do anything because there is no page zero. We can then set the current page is equal to itself minus one. We can then call our render page function, passing in this dot current page. And the more I think about this, we probably even don't really need to pass anything into this render page. So I'm going to try to just get this dot current page. And I say that because we already have access to the current page within here. So there's no need to be passing it around if we don't need to. So I'm going to just leave that off, which should help clean this up a tiny bit. So we can just render the page when we click the previous page. But then we also need to remember to set the page number. And we want to get the target and the value is equal to this dot current page because that input box needs to change when we click that previous page button. I'm going to copy this because the next page is going to be very similar. 
So we'll change the function to next page, which is the action that we had. But we don't know the upper end here, so we can't put in some kind of static value. Instead, we can do a check if the current page is less than this.pdf and then the number of pages. If that's true, then we can increment this with a plus equals of one. We can then render the page and update the input. But then we have the change page function, and that's going to be a little bit more complicated because we need to get our requested page. And we do have access to that with this dot page number target, and we can get the value of that, but we are going to be referring to this quite a bit. So I'm going to set a requested page and set it equal to that. We can then check if the requested page is greater than zero. And we can also check if the requested page is less than or equal to this.pdf.num pages. So that way we're kind of saying within the bounds of the PDF document. If that is the case, then we can set the current page is equal to the requested page. We can then call this.render page. And if this is not true, then we can do an alert and we can say an invalid and let's just say invalid page number. And maybe we want to interpolate in the maximum number of pages. So that way the user isn't trying to guess how many pages there are in the PDF. But once we do that, we also want to make sure that we are then resetting the number value back to the current page that it was on. So I'm going to save all this because we should be pretty much done with this. So to test this out, we'll go to our books. We'll add a new book. I'll select a PDF. I'll give it a title, and then we can create the book. We'll see that the book was created, our stimulus controller initialized with our buttons. You'll see I cannot click on the previous page because we are at page one. I can go to the next page and it works. If I try to change the value, you'll see that it doesn't work. And if we look at the console, we do see that there is an invalid page request. So we do have a bug in our code that we need to fix. And if I had a guess, it's going to be a type issue where this requested page, the PDFs is explicitly expecting a number. So let's try converting this to a number. So I'll save that. We'll come back, refresh. Then I'll try to click the up arrow and you'll see that as we change, it's then updating the pages. Let's try something like a page 100. And you'll see that we got an invalid page number. The max value is 55. So if we try to add 55 here, then it takes us to 55 and there's no more pages that we can go past. We can go back a bit if we want and that works. And we can take this all the way down to the first page and that's going to work as we expect. And so this is a lot more JavaScript than I usually like to write, but because it's all contained within a stimulus controller, I feel pretty comfortable with it not affecting anything else within my application. And again, remember, you can set your own scale so you can have a zoom in, zoom out. Or if you wanted, you can play around with this class. I'll change it to a width of 100. We'll refresh the page. Now you'll see it's much wider, but we are going to have to scroll up and down to read the book. That may not be a big deal, but just something to be aware of. And one final thought, you may want to make sure that you're doing some validations on the user input here, because if you put in something that's not a PDF, then you'll see that it just doesn't render properly. You don't get the image that was uploaded or anything. So you may want to have a conditional check when you're going to show this, making sure that it is in fact a PDF. Otherwise, you may get some reports that this isn't working properly. Well, that's all for this episode. Thanks for watching. For more videos, check out driftandruby.com.